Bye. Bye bye. Off she goes. At 4.30 in the morning. Lala, back inside. Back to bed. Like a leaf, twig. Jackie's gone to Sydney for a couple of days. She's got family up there. She often goes up to see them, which is great, but ah, miss her when she's not here. It's just gone 4.30 in the morning. I could probably stay up, do some editing or maybe do some study, but I think what I'm gonna do is go back to bed now and cut to the point in the vlog when I'm all like awake and happy. Good morning, good morning. Once again, here I am in Melbourne, not at Oshkosh. It's my fourth day now of being not at Oshkosh and things are starting to get really good down there. I've been seeing some of the footage, uh, the air show components are kicking in. There was a great panel of some other YouTube pilots as well. Things are looking really great down there and I am still not at Oshkosh. But in better news, I'm going to the airport again and we're flying today in Echo Yankee Zulu. I will be filming this flight, so I'm gonna share the, the details of the flight with you as well. And we have a special guest. Inside, clear for takeoff, Echo Yankee Zulu. So you keep an eye on those RPMs, make sure you're comfortable, but everything's in the green. We've got airspeed on both. A little bit of back pressure so Philippe doesn't tell me off for bouncing the nose wheel. And now I'm 90 knots. I mean, look at that, that's ridiculous. Yeah, that's the thing, as long as you stay below your 104 knots. Yeah. You're going to use 2,000 feet a minute. Traffic warning works too. Yeah, that was good. Alright, come on Cessna, we've got you. <laughs> this is well past Hello, it. Hello, Romeo, 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 traffic overtaking you on your right to Cirrus, also departing on downwind. Traffic inside, Kilo Romeo, Romeo. All I do now to keep it simple is come back in the throttle to about 75% to 70%. Yep, okay. Alright. One thing, when we were talking the other day about, you know, I just lean into pick a number 17 gallons an hour. Yeah. The only thing you don't know is you haven't gone through the full lean cycle of the engine. That's why we've got this whole system of each EGT on each cylinder. Yeah. If one spark plug's running a little bit iffy or you've got a partially blocked fuel nozzle, if you just pull it to a number, you may unwillingly put one of them in a detonation zone. So from here, every part of the lean I would now do with a lean assist. Lean assist? Lean assist, yep. Now it's not a rapid pullback. Just a nice smooth one. This should get us back to about 65% on the leaner peak side. So those temperatures now are going to be going up because you're taking basically the change in the fuel mixture. Yep. There's less Let's fuel. Peak. Yep. And then it should be at about 14 gallons an hour, 14 and a half. Now I'd come back to about 30. All right. We're just slightly too lean there, just nudge it back up again. Increase the fuel flow. Arguably about 45 ish degrees on your lean side, lean side of peak. Yeah, I see. From here, I would always then go normalise. Explain as well, one thing we should say as well, so Steve's not a flight instructor, this isn't no. an instructional flight, I'm pilot in command of this aircraft, I'm responsible for the aircraft, 
Stephen's obviously though, he's a licensed aircraft engineer, so he's just helping me out with uh, just to, you know some of the ways I can optimise how I'm using the engine and just fly a bit more efficiently, etc. So it's not not a training flight, we should say that. However, can you explain though uh, why then the fuel flows are different at different altitudes? aircraft like this as well because I know that that does confuse some people sometimes especially yeah. when for the student pilots maybe especially when you're starting out this more comes back to it being a normally aspirated engine it's not a turbocharged engine so being normally aspirated as you get to different altitudes there's a different amount of air basically there's less air as you get higher so the engine's not getting as much air even if you have the same fuel flow at a higher altitude basically you've got more fuel per air mixture which just changes the mixture so that's one of those ones why they come back to these is every time you do an altitude change in a normally aspirated engine in the aeroplane, just re-lean it again. Yeah. It's not worth if you try and claim climb even if a thousand feet and they go, Oh, well I had about that figure in fuel flow and just send it back to that. Without looking at it you might be back at peak EGT again. There's a lot of people out there that fly in accordance with a bad example, for example what we're doing today, making a video about it and it's on a forum. But yeah. at the end of the day, you fly the aeroplane like we have today, in accordance with the POH, you're never going to have an issue with it. So just coming under the nose now is the, the car park for where they start the seal walk. Oh yeah. And then you walk down to either the coastline or further up to the end point and there's a look out at the end point that looks out over the last couple of rocks where all the seals are also not great swimming area this is where all the sharks are as well oh is this where the sharks are okay public safety warning come and see the seals but don't go for a swim angry man in the gray suit <laughs> Oh, do you know the other thing? If we can see a whale, you know Philippe, who I flew with in the UK, he would be gutted if we saw a whale. We flew over so much water over those three weeks that he wanted to see a whale on every flight. If either of us see it, just grab, disengage the autopilot <laughs> and take us down. It is that time of year that you should see them. This is Philip Island racetrack coming down on the next as well. Oh yeah. I know you're a fan of your Formula 1s. But if you're interested in your motorsport, come down here and watch the MotoGP guys. Because that's just a whole other level of bravery seeing what they do. To see the but guys at the end of that main straight on a motorbike doing 340 kilometres an hour, it's a bit of bravery, I think. 340 kilometres an hour. At the end of that straight. At the end of that straight. Oh my goodness. I just want to find a whale so you can tell the lead that you found one. Oh, me too. Oh, the bragging rights with him would be, would it be worth <laughs> it. It's worth the extra fuel to go over there and have a look. Every little white cap you see, you think he's one. Yeah, you do. <laughs> and there's also these like light patches in the ocean as well, aren't there? Yeah. And you see one of those, you just get a glint, like when the sun's not reflecting on it, and you think, oh, is that something coming up? I think that is way whale next to the boat. You reckon? I think this came out of the water. Oh, okay. On the, as we look at the right-hand side of the boat. Right-hand side of the boat. It might just be me making a liar out of myself. But no, no, no. The fact that they're stopped there. It's de that's definitely a whale-watching boat. I yeah. think you're right about that, because there's people you can see on the bow and at the back. Either that, if they haven't seen a whale, at least they've seen the EYZ flying around the top <laughs> of it. If there's anyone on that boat, can you tell us if the bow of the aeroplane needs a clean or not? Either that, or there was a whale there, and they were having a pleasant time watching it, and <laughs> we scared it away. We scared it away. <laughs> No smoke coming out. Yeah, right, ten minutes. No <laughs> smoke. So a couple of people were saying that every time the aircraft comes out, you do all the work and I just stand around filming it. And when yeah. I said thanks for helping, they're like, helping, Stephen does all the work. I brought it out today, but you did just put it back in. So thanks for your help. That's right. 
How do you balance that? I'm trying to edit as I go along with these daily vlogs. It just keeps me ahead. If I can do a bit of editing, then go out and do something else, come back, maybe do another bit of editing. I don't know if that's the most efficient way of doing it. Maybe I should just wait until the end of the day and do it all in one hit, but especially when, after that flight that we're on this morning, especially when you've got that much footage, even just three GoPros, which I generally have one on the wing, one facing into the cockpit and one facing out the front. Three GoPros, the iPhone footage that I have as well, the audio recording which I do on the audio recorder. I mean, that's a lot of data that I have to then get onto the laptop here. So I'm just trying to do that now whilst I have a bit of time. Also, um, slight confession, if you saw in the other vlog, Jackie bought me some chocolate to eat whilst I was doing the editing. That's how much is left now. I have such a problem with chocolate. If there's chocolate in the fridge, I just eat it. In fact, you know what? Everyone who does like YouTube channels for aviation, they get sponsors from like Bose, Garmin Aviation. That's all good. Cadbury's, if you want to sponsor this channel, I'm listening. Mm -hmm.